this is not an issue of a sin. This is an issue of transparency, yes. openness. I just, I just think sometimes I've always struggled. I've always struggled with people creating a myth without knowing the man. You know, sometimes we build myths around people's lives and, and we can be great professional ministries. But if, if to, to know the man is a different deal. All right, I'm gonna try to do this while I drive up the mountain here. Uh. So basically, I uh, I think this is an important video. I mean, not me driving up the mountain here, but basically, this of Lou Engel uh, publicly repenting before I hop and and my generation for a sexual sin that you know a problem with pornography. And I mean, it, it came across to me as, as deeply sincere and sorrowful, uh, mournful, uh, and even hopeful to break something off of a generation who's clearly struggled with sexual immorality. And so, like, I think you should be honored for that. And uh, I preach no toleration of Jezebel. And I can only say that I've tolerated, have watched pornography, and I've agonized over it. And it's not just been once, it's been a, you know, one of those things that you just cried and you fasted. And, and it seemed like this came as an unplanned thing. It wasn't something he had cleared with leaders, the leadership team to be sharing it. If, if, you, if you won't mind, I'd like to stand and, oh, and share. This is not a, a planned thing of vulnerability. Is this okay if I stand? Well, you can do anything I, you I want. I can't hardly be casual. In front of basically thousands of, uh, of IHOP people. So I think that what was significant to me about it, which stuck out to me even then, it's why I remembered it, you know, when I, in light of recent news and allegations in regard to Mike Bickle, I remembered the feeling I had when it, to me, it felt like he quenched the spirit on stage of a man who was clearly broken for, for his own family, for, for the people of God, and who, who wants to rid us of this stain on the body of Christ, of sexual scandals and, and, and issues. I think of my son Judah. <laughs> I love you, Judah. <laughs> and you see Mike really in my view, trying to minimize this and, and downplay this, this public display of repentance. It was like he was bothered by it. He said, I don't want it to get confused in the airwaves. Uh, I mean, that was always sweet, but real as well. And, and there's a big difference between somebody having a besetting sin and they give into it and somebody that has something hitting them and they push back and they push back and they push back. And I've watched you Lou, because you don't like you don't want to minimize anything. I don't. I, don't. I, I know, but I, I. But at the same time, I'm not going to let you exaggerate it either, because I know the truth of what you're talking about. And he would push back, and he would come with tears and tell me he saw commercials on TV and saw images and would come to me the next day weeping because he didn't turn the channel on the commercial. I said, Lou. I love you for that, but that's not exactly the same thing as A and B. And he goes, it is to me, it is to me, and I'm not okay with that. 
And he said, I've done a little more here and there, and I'm not minimizing it. but Because I've known darkness, Mike. Yes, I know. We've talked. But it is very different than somebody who just gets in a stream and goes with it. I saw you with integrity. You don't call it integrity. I do. Pushing back, confessing, weeping. Lou, you're the real deal. And I just don't want... I don't want the devil taking the testimony of your 30 years I've known you. You are the real deal. I don't want this thing twisted in the airwaves. I just have to say that. I love your openness. And, I, and he is always, over the years, says, I'm going to say everything. I go, Lou, you looked at a commercial yesterday. Don't, don't. No, no, it's going to get all confusing. Yeah, I know, I know there was a time here and there, but that's not what we're talking about. Bro. Excuse me, we're not for, like, we're, our audience are not the airwaves. We have the audience of one, the Lord God. And this is a call to you to follow the model of someone who you yourself expressed was a great leader. But I pray that it will open all your heart as you're listening, as you're watching here and as you're listening through the live stream. I would like to take about 90 seconds and introduce Lou to some young people who don't know him because when he talks, you might think, that's, that's neat, an older guy, he's humble. But when you understand what the Lord's done in and through him, for him to talk this way, it touches me. It was about 30 years ago in the 1988, I heard the story of a man in Southern California. He had this intense prayer life. And I was interested in growing in prayer. And I was hearing stories about Lou Engle. And so I'm in Southern California and I get to meet Lou. And we bonded like instantly. And it was about 30 years ago. And he started the first 24 seven house of prayer I ever heard of actually. He started it in Southern California. No, <laughs> Lou, you did. And he always puts it down, but he did. And the Lord has used Lou in the last 30 years in a very unique way to stir the prayer movement across the whole earth in a very unique, singular way. When I look at Lou, I go, Lou, amazing. And then we've heard of the call. And if you don't feel that you need to make a public repentance, then it, at the very least, as Brian Kim is named as Lou's spiritual son, even in this video, then honor spiritual sons and daughters. I thank God for Brian Kim, who's a spiritual son of mine that I can walk with. He knows me. Who have real concern right now of deception and tainting of, of the pure waters of, of worship in this movement. So I, I do, I call on you to speak to this in obedience to the model given by Christ in Matthew 18. And I felt like today I've, I've wondered about this moment my whole life that I could just say, God, could you break something over a whole generation? Maybe it's okay. Huh? That I have a feeling a whole lot of guys in my generation live in deep shame. Not to go hiring, what is it, 1 Corinthians like 16, 6, or no, wherever, where brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. It's, it's unacceptable. And I call you to repay. This is very difficult for me because I've preached messages over my life and I've lived them and I've fought out, fought them. Uh, but it's challenging when you've preached them that you would fail in that very message. I'm trying to think if there was anything else to add to just, I mean, obviously just watch the video and see what, what you guys take away. But to me, It's like what Jim Elliot said, if, if anybody knows this quote, the best way to show up a crooked stick is to lay a straight stick beside it. And 
I think that's what happened on the stage. Then that Lou was laid down as a straight stick in repentance and you know, you can hear his outcries and Mike's were walking around on stage behind him and I don't know who the guy is beside Lou that's like rubbing his leg, but to me it's like, dude. I believe shifted things and we're gonna see a breakthrough, Lou. It is remarkable what the Lord has done in 30 years for you. The prayer movement, stand up, let's hold life for Stand up. I don't know. I, I don't know like all the leadership of IHOP Casey, but I know there are some sincere hearts that are under the leadership of Christ. And that's what you're being called to come under in the spirit of Matthew 18 and speak to this. Yeah, so uh, I'll just drop the video after this and I'm headed to me. Alright, I think that's all I got. Christ, we just ask for you to reveal. Maybe, maybe the walls have to come down for the roof to come down. We're praying for the roof to come down. Send revival. But you seek to reveal and bring to the light. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Whoa. And there's a spirit of obedience even in that struggle. That's really true, Lou. I just can't let this get exaggerated out in the airwaves. It, I think you're one of the primary voices. And the only, I'm only making a big statement so we see the, the way he's going to talk in a minute. Because guys that do this don't talk this way. That's the only point I'm trying to make. Because Lou doesn't want to hear a bunch of big grandiose things about himself. But... Lou's voice 30 years ago against abortion and for pro-life was like none other in America yeah. that I know of. A couple would be right there next to you. Lou Eagle's voice, I believe, shifted things and we're going to see a breakthrough, Lou. It is remarkable what the Lord has done in 30 years for you. The prayer movement, stand up, let's hold life for stand up. We have become dear friends. I call him, you don't get to call him this, I call him Rooster. Rooster, you're here, I love you. <laughs> if, if, you if you won't mind, I'd like to stand and, oh, and share. This is not a, a planned thing of vulnerability. Is this okay if I stand? Well, you can do anything I, you I want. I can't hardly be casual about you do anything you want, honestly. Um, when I hear of Francis today and he's spending hours in silence, I don't know if I've ever spent two minutes in silence. I think I just talked to God my whole life. And so, so people think, well, Lou is such a deep guy and incredible. Well, I got my, I'm sure I'm incredible. <laughs> so are you. Because we're sons, sons and daughters of God, but I just, I just think sometimes I've always struggled. I've always struggled with people creating a myth without knowing the man. You know, sometimes we build myths around people's lives, and and we can be great professional ministries, but. If, if to, to know the man is a different deal. And um, this, was not, this was not planned. I just opened my heart the other day at the summit. And, and uh, so after uh, 20 years of the call, it's been an amazing journey. I found myself kind of, I've ended the call, I've kind of I found myself kind of in a, um, in a, a breakdown, trying to figure out who I am and, and maybe struggling with my identity, mourning a little bit about the call and 
where do I go from here? And I'm thank God I'm going to do the send with Andy Bird, and and it's going to be amazing. And I, but I think there's some times when God just comes and searches our souls, and we find ourselves maybe in the dark night of the soul. And I I feel like that in my own personal life. This is very difficult for me because. I've preached messages over my life and I've lived them and I've fought at it, fought them. Uh, but it's challenging when you've preached them that you would fail in that very message that you preached. And I've, I've had a uh, besetting sin and I've found it more intense. And I'm standing as a father but to ask forgiveness of a generation that I've actually had, a, had, had dreams that my, my children would live under the, uh, 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 the stuff that I've left them. I'm really scared right here, <laughs> but I felt that I was to just open up my heart and ask forgiveness because the last thing I want to do is offend a generation. Woe to them who offends one of these little ones. I, I'm not living under the, like God's going to kill me and beat me up. I, I know he, it's Hefspa, but at the same time, I don't want to live a lie. And uh, I have preached no toleration of Jezebel. And I can only say that I've tolerated, have watched pornography, and I've agonized over it. And it's not just been once, it's been a, you know, one of those things that you just cried and you fasted. And, and I felt like today I've, I've wondered about this moment my whole life that I could just say, God, could you break something over a whole generation? That you, maybe it's okay. I, that I have a feeling a whole lot of guys in my generation live in deep shame. And we gotta move from ministry to reality rather than living in shame and preaching great messages. And I'll never forget Mike. I, I hope this is okay, Mike. I'll never forget I was in 40 days of fasting in Detroit that I, I, I don't remember exactly what happened. I've kept a short leash with people, but I remember calling you and asking, since I've sinned, and, uh, and Mike said to me, oh, Lou, all day long, all day long I've been praying for you that Joshua the high priest would be put on new robes. And I can't tell you the freedom that I entered into. I felt like I got saved again, and for weeks it was like joy unspeakable and full of glory. Maybe. Maybe the walls have to come down for the roof to come down. We're praying for the roof to come down, send revival. But maybe if the walls would come down, we would start getting revival. Simply because the roof comes down when the walls come down. And I'm just thinking, I'm just appealing to fathers that would not live a lie. And I'm asking forgiveness today, and I've actually wondered if we could pray today that God would shatter, shatter the lie, and we can really become who we are. And I've opened up recently to my own. Uh, it's okay, don't, don't do that. I've opened up to my own sons and daughters, my own sons, they know me. Part of me just wants to, wants them to just honor their dad, and but they know my struggles, and I, I wonder if we really need, I don't want to call it struggle. I don't want to give one bit of excuse to this thing. I want the fear of the Lord. I've been reading this Romans. Do something. A seal of fire that's stronger than all this. Can I share a few more minutes? Everything, everything.
Uh, Lou, we, we, Lou we, we, we don't have time frame, except the end of the session, so just soar. I don't, I don't, listen, I don't want to give an excuse. I thank God for Brian Kim, who's a spiritual son of mine that I can walk with. He knows me. I don't want to just stay in my failures. And I, I know people will come up afterwards with ministries. I, it happens. I, I got your answer. I don't know if anybody has my answer, but an outpouring of the Holy Spirit's fire that is so strong. And I just know this, if we just live a lie, we'll never see that. And I, maybe me sharing this can give you freedom to open up your hearts without feeling that you're disqualified from the ministry and that we could actually start a revolution of reality where the church doesn't just do the, the stuff and not really have the heart. I do beg your forgiveness. And, uh, and I, I once had a dream in the days of Bill Clinton. And uh, in the dream, I was in, the, in bed with Bill Clinton in my underwear. This is very real. And my pastor, Cheon, and all these leaders from America were there. And Ch Pastor Cheon said, Lou, would you stand up and pray for Bill Clinton? He was sleeping in the bed. I stood up. I'm just in my underwear. And I pray this pitiful little prayer and I run out because of my shame. I woke up and I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me. Neither you nor this nation nor the church of this nation has authority over Bill Clinton because it sleeps in the same bed. Would you just lift your hands and cry out for deliverance? Yeah. Come on, stand with me. Just let me just pray for it. I don't know what to do, but I just felt that someday I'd open my struggles and say, God, give us a breakthrough. Send something stronger. Yes, God. Send something stronger. Yes, Save us. Save me with a fire. Seal my heart. Make God, Song of Solomon 8, 6, a reality in the church that's fire is stronger. Would you just pray, Lord, save us. God, pray through us. Open up hearts all across this nation and the world today. Help us to find freedom. I'm just hoping. I did not plan this. I wasn't trying to plan this thing. I didn't want to be here today. I wanted to, I didn't want to go to the, whatever those meetings are beforehand. The discernment meetings. But maybe as a father, this would give you courage to walk in the light. <laughs> that, that freedom can break out. And then, and then the other thing I just want to share is I want to ask forgiveness. You know, I've, it's been extraordinary um, ministry. I, I, I'm a father. I got seven kids and six grandchildren, two on the way. I got great kids. And yet my son and I are talking recently and he's, we're really being real with one another. I want to encourage fathers and pastors to be real, not hide behind pulpits. And get... And, and I've, I've, I'm letting my sons, my sons know me maybe more. And I've been confronted about issues where, I mean, I got all my kids are awesome, but there's issues of abandonment. And I'm having to look at that. My son, my son recently just spoke to me about things about it. And I, I think of my son, Judah. <laughs> I love you, Judah. <laughs> You're an amazing young man. I haven't given you all that you've needed. I realized that a lot of times I'm with sons and daughters and I face to face, man, I really connect with them. But then they go away and I never call them ever again. 
I felt like the Lord said, Lou, it's not just because you don't like phone calls. It's because you've got issues that your sons need you. I want to just pray for fathers. I pray for fathers here today that, God, we would not abandon our sons and treat them, Lord, that we could just fling them off. Lord, I am, I, I, and please don't expect necessarily if you've touched me before that I, you're going to get a phone call tomorrow. I probably got a thousand to call. But I, I just want to just say forgive us for not connecting. And I pray for a revolution of fathers that will reach and touch sons and multiply them out, not just for ministry, but for heart. I, I don't know, I've just opened up my heart to you and I'm in this transition and I'm trying to find my way. And I'm finding that ministry is not the thing that's gonna fulfill me. It's, it's gonna be real relationships and... This is not an issue of a sin. This is an issue of transparency, yes. openness. And I believe that we're not talking about something specific. We're talking about many things that has hindered the body from being the family that the Lord wanted it to be. I want to talk about you, Lou, for a second. Because Lou lived in Kansas City, part of our leadership team for about six, seven years, something like that. And, and Lou, would, we had very open relationship and he would call, call me sometimes, hey, you're my priest and my pastor, I want to tell you. And, and we had, uh, I mean, that was always sweet, but real as well. And, and there's a big difference between somebody having a besetting sin and they give into it and somebody that has something hitting them and they push back and they push back and they push back. And I've watched you, Lou, because you don't like, you don't want to minimize anything. I don't. I, don't. I, I know, but I, I, but at the same time, I'm not going to let you exaggerate it either because I know the truth of what you're talking about. And he would push back and he would come with tears and tell me he saw commercials on TV and saw images and would come to me the next day weeping because he didn't turn the channel on the commercial. I said, Lou, I love you for that, but that's not exactly the same thing as A and B. And he goes, it is to me, it is to me, and I'm not okay with that. And he said, I've done a little more here and there and I'm not minimizing it, but- Because I've known darkness, Mike. Yes, I know, we've talked, but it is very different than somebody who just gets in a stream and goes with it I saw you with integrity. You don't call it integrity, I do. Pushing back, confessing, weeping. Lou, you're the real deal. And I just don't want, I don't want the devil taking the testimony of your 30 years I've known you. You are the real deal. I don't want this thing twisted in the airwaves. I just have to say that. I love your openness. And, I, and he is always, over the years, says, I'm gonna say everything. I go, Lou. You looked at a commercial yesterday. Don't, don't, no, no, it's gonna get all confusing. Yeah, I know, I know there was a time here and there, but that's not what we're talking about. This is not something that you lived in. It's something you always warred against. And beloved, you war against it. There's a yes in your spirit. That's the spirit of obedience. Even though it hits you and knocks you down, you will arise and you will resist it again. And there's a spirit of obedience even in that struggle. That's really true, Lou. I just can't let this get exaggerated out in the airwaves. Let's just wait for a moment on the Lord. Because I don't want to say anything he doesn't want me to say or say something he does. I, I, I just want to... I just feel like that. Lou, can go, I just love you. That was so holy. Hey. Don't, don't you heroize him. He hates that. That's what he's trying to get you not to do. Because he's not minimizing it. He's opening his heart so we can get set free. 
He just loved it. Don't clap. I mean, it's for real. He laid it all on the line right now so that we would contend like we've contended against abortion and like we've contended for marriage. He's laid it on the line for victory, beloved, not to wallow in it. Right now, he just loosed a clarion call for us to confess our sins to one another and to rally as men to face the last great giant in the land. We want authority over nations and we've got to overcome that foul spirit, that twisted serpent that's come against the saints. And the Lord is going to give us power over it. But David came to a place of brokenness where God met him in his pain and suffering and the loss of sons and everything else so that God could bring forth the deliverance.